well friends uh, another session for uh, the revision in the quick revision program in this i'll talk briefly about the proteins and then i'll go on to the enzymes enzyme is the part where we get frequent questions so we'll take a look at the enzyme section a little bit more detail so in the proteins few points that i wanted to highlight one is the auxiliary proteins which assist in folding very frequently asked question and you should know the names of these proteins the first most important is the chaperones chaperones include the chaperonins and the heat shock proteins then we have the protein disulfide isomerase the proline cis trans isomerase the calnexin and the calreticulin the grp94 and the bip immunoglobulin heavy chain binding protein okay this is the ig heavy chain binding protein so these are some of the very very important auxiliary proteins which assist in folding please note heat shock proteins are also known as the rescue factors also known as the rescue factors the reason being they unfold misfolded proteins they will unfold the misfolded proteins therefore they are also known as rescue factors second very very important question is in the four orders of protein structure and the nature of the bond which is in there so starting with the primary structure what is primary structure it is the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain and the nature of bond in this case is the peptide bond remember peptide bond is a covalent bond secondary structure the folding of 3 to 30 contiguous segments of polypeptide into a geometrically ordered unit examples of this geometrically ordered unit the loop turn bend alpha helix beta pleated sheet all of these are the secondary structures all of these are secondary structures in case of the secondary structure what we have is the non covalent bonds we have the non covalent bonds so non covalent bonds will include the hydrogen bond the van der waals forces van der waals forces the ionic interaction and also the hydrophobic interaction hydrophobic interaction also helps to stabilize the structure remember these are non covalent bonds individually they are very very weak that is why when we do the denaturation the non covalent bonds supporting the secondary structure are completely disrupted on denaturation secondary structure will be completely made up of the non covalent bonds there are no covalent bond in the secondary structure talk about tertiary structure it is the assembly of all the secondary structure into a larger functional unit and uh, here we have uh, two types of bonds you can have the disulfide bonds disulfide bonds will be covalent in nature in addition you can have the non covalent bonds non covalent bonds are by far the more uh, numerous bonds and they are responsible for holding the tertiary structure together at some places we can have the disulfide bond so when you do the denaturation the tertiary structure will also get disrupted although the disulfide bonds will remain intact to break the disulfide bond you will need special forces for example the mercaptan ethanol can be used to break the disulfide bond when you are doing the denaturation in the sds page normally in the routine process slight heating the secondary structure tertiary structure will get disrupted the non covalent bonds will be destroyed but the sulfide bond will remain intact